Hi everyone, thanks so much for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff and I'll be your host for the show. Before we bring on tonight's guest, if you've had a Dogman Encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, please go to bigfooteyewitness.com and submit a report. It's been a long time since we've had tonight's guest on the show. Of all the special guests we've had on the show, tonight's guest ranks off the charts in popularity. Of course, I'm talking about Marvin Allen. Marvin, thanks so much for coming back on. Thanks for having me here, Vic. It's been a while, but I'm glad to be back. Oh, we're glad to have you back. Like I've told you several times already, thanks again so much for doing this. You know, we really appreciate it. You've been busy since you were on here last time. Please tell us what you've been up to. Well, since my last time on the show, as the um, listeners know, I had started my own YouTube channel. I just started a new Facebook page, and it's called True Encounters with Marvin Allen and the Doug Pack. That's D-U-G, not D-O-G. And um, I've just been busy, man. I've been blessed enough to have people contact me and give me their encounters. And like I say, man, I've been just positive things out this. You know, ever since I got into this, man, it's been my passion. I love doing this, and I'm going to continue to keep doing this. Well, I'm glad to see that you're putting your talent to use. That's great. Well, Marvin, I'm sure everyone's chomping at the bit to hear you do what you do best, so let's not keep the listeners waiting any longer. I'm going to get out of the way now, so please share your new encounters with us. Now, this first encounter, it do come from out of the South. This eyewitness didn't want to give me her location or her name. And, you know, I was just happy enough just to get her, her sight. Now, her sight started one day when she said she got up and, you know, she decided to go to the market, you know, do what she do all the time. So she says she at the market, you know, she doing her shopping and stuff like that. She gets to the register, you know, pay for it. She goes out. And she started to load her groceries in the car. Now, as she loading, I'm finished loading her groceries in the car. She get a call, and her her mother on the other line. So she answered, and her mother asks her if she's coming over later on that day. And she said, "Yeah, I'll be over there. I'm gonna take my groceries home, you know, and put them in the house." Now, mind you, this is something she do, you know, at least every other week. You know, she say she always go shopping. So she say. Groceries in the car, she finished talking to her mother. So she started to drive. Now, she usually take the same road all the way going home each time. She said, but this time, she took a different route. So she say she driving, you know, and she had the music turned down real low, not up real loud. So she was listening to the music. So she said as she comes, she says she comes around this bend and she started to turn and she gets back on a straightaway. Now she said, why is she on this straightaway? She noticed something like in the ditch on the right hand side of the road. So she slows her car down. She said she slowed her car down to like 15 miles an hour. So as she slowed the car down and she looking, she noticed she could see something. It's like squatted over, but she see the back of this thing. She don't really know what it is. So she says she stopped. And when she stopped, she turns her high beams on. And when she turns her high beams on, that's when this thing stands up and it turns around and it looks straight into her car. Like it was looking straight in her eyes. Now she she don't she don't know what to do because she don't really know what she's looking at. So she said after a few seconds, this creature starts to walk and it stops. Not in the middle of the street, but the lane that she going down in. And it faces in her direction. So when it faces in her direction, she said it started to take a few steps. It took a few steps and it stopped. Now she really scared. I said, well, what did this thing look like? She said from what she could tell, she said it looked like a timber wolf. She said it was on two legs, bipedal. It had pointy ears. She said, but it didn't have like a, to her, 
and these are her words. To her, it didn't have like a long protruding snout, like some of the eyewitnesses say, like far as a, a shepherd. But she said it did have a snout. It had long arms that hung down in the front, like down like where his knees would be, which she said. She said it had the uh, bent back legs like a dove. So she watching this thing and this thing watching her. So she said after about, cause the sighting didn't last that long. She said after about maybe almost a minute, she could see headlights coming up like in her direction on the other side of the lane. So she said this creature, it turned his head, looked that way where the headlights was at, and this thing took one leap and cleared the rest of that street and landed over in the ditch and took another leap and landed up in the tree line. And she sat there. She didn't move because she's still confused about what she saw. So she said after that car came down, it was coming down and it almost got near her. She said she glanced over in that direction again. And she said she seen that creature. And when she seen it, it moved behind a tree. She said when it moved behind a tree, that's when she pulled off. Now she said she driving home, it still rattled in her mind about what she just saw. So she said after about a week or two, because she said she had, she was constantly having nightmares. She was waking up in cold sweats and, and stuff like that. She said she finally confided in, she finally confided with someone to tell what she saw. And she said she never took that road no more. She always kept going back down the road that um she always take. And I asked, I said, well, I mean, it could be on any road. She said, well, I didn't see him all this time and going down that road. So I'm going to just keep on taking that road right there. So that was that encounter. And that encounter came out of South Carolina. Now, in this next encounter, this encounter come from one of my subscribers. And this encounter comes out of Texas. And this encounter happened December the 18th, 2013. And her name that I'm going to use is Marsh. Now, Marsh said one weekend she decided to plan on taking a road trip by herself. But she said her girlfriend had gave her a call and she was telling her girlfriend, well, look, I'm going on a road trip. She said, well, can I come with you? Can I come? So she decided to take her best friend because that was her best friend. So she said her best friend came over there and, you know, they got all their supplies and what they're doing because they was headed to Mexico to go meet some people. So she said they got in the car, had all that stuff. And so they started to drive. She said while she was driving, it was raining out, you know, not real hard, but it was drizzling. So she said they driving. She said she didn't have no phone at the time. She said she just had a map. So she pulled over. She looked at the map. And then her friend said, no, I got an iPhone. So she said, well, why you ain't tell me that at first? So she said, um, okay, well, put the um, coordinates in on your iPhone, which she did. She put their coordinates in. So they start riding. Mom said she was always taught when she was driving, keep your eye on the road. Because you never know if something going, you know, an animal might run out. You might hit it or something like that. So that's what she did. You know what I mean? She stayed under the speed limit. She didn't stay with it or go over. She stayed under the speed limit. So they driving. So all of a sudden, as they driving, they must have missed a turn or something, she said. So they had to pull into a gas station. Going in and ask the clerk, you know what I mean, gas station attendants, you know, do they, you know, can they put, she put them on the, um, on the right path, which she did. So they got some snacks and something to drink while they was in there and they head on out, you know, on their way back going to, um, Mexico. So she said, they start driving again. They get back on the same road. They start driving. And now she said, this is a straight away. So she said, as they driving, 
she glanced over, she looked at her friend, you know, her friend is on the phone, you know, texting and stuff like that. So as they driving, she noticed that her lights started to hit something right off the road in the ditch. Her lights started to hit something. So mind you, doing this encounter, she said she never sped up. She kept the same pace driving. So she said she driving. So her lights hit something. She said, but she could only see like a side view of it. She said, but as she driving, getting closer to this, this thing, she said this thing turns his head and she could see yellow eye shine. She said the eyes was bright, like they illuminated or something. She said, and then she see the snout on this thing with the pointy ears. She said, ever since she was a little girl, she used to raise wolves. So she know how one looked like. She said that this thing face, the head of it, looked at just like a timber wolf that she used to have. So she driving. And this thing turned its head and it looked at her. And then it just started going out into the street. Now, mind you, when it get out in the street, it drops down on all fours. It stands right there. Like as you coming out the ditch, it's right there at the street. She says she's still driving though, because it's right there. She's thinking about she's gonna just swerve around it and keep going. She said. When she got up close on this thing, this thing just darted out. Now, when it darted out to her, she said it's like she was in a tunnel vision. And she said it seemed like everything just slowed down. So she got a good look at this creature. And these are her words on how this thing looked. She said the back had to be four and a half to five feet at the hump. She said, that's how big this thing was on all fours. She said, it looked like the black timber wolf. She said at this time, she didn't get a look at the hands or nothing like that because it took two leaps when it was going across and it was over on the other side. But she said it looked like a black timber wolf. And I asked her, I said, well, how long do you think this thing was? She said she good with measurements because she always grew up on a farm all her life. And, you know, they chopping wood. She said she did all that. She said this thing body length had to be six feet. And when she said that, man, I was like, man, this thing was humongous. So she said it went over on the other side into the tree line and just start running through. But she kept on driving. She said she missed this thing by inches of hitting it like it was waiting or like it was just it wanted her to have an accident that's what she said in her head she said ever since she had that sight she's just been having nightmares now mind you this ain't the only thing that happened to her because when i was interviewing her she went real deep you know but i'm not gonna get into it on this segment right here because this right here is about doug men so i just gave you her dog man sighting. She said, but it took her years, years before she could confide into somebody because she didn't want nobody to think that she was crazy. So she said it took her years before she could open up the nightmares, the waking up. And I mean, it's just it's just crazy, man. You know, but like I said, that was Marsh encounter, and that happened in Texas. And it happened in December the 18th, and that happened in 2013. Okay, this encounter right here, this encounter happened in Canada. And it happened in the month of October 2016. And the name that I'm going to use, because as y'all know, I never use a person name out of respect. The name I'm going to use is Rick. Now Rick said that this sighting it happened in Canada near New Law. 
He said him and his friends was out walking and they wind up going to this cornfield where they always used to go at. Now, mind you, on this cornfield, it's near cemetery. Now, the cemetery used to be an old Indian burial mound. You know, and I thought that played a part with this sighting too. So he said they was just walking around and Rick said that he had to go relieve himself. He said not far from this cornfield was a patch of wood. So he decided to go over there to relieve himself, you know, so he could urinate. So everybody's just spread it out. Rick went over to where the patch of woods was at. And they call a lot of stuff out there the bush. Why? I don't know, but he said they call stuff out there the bush. So Rick said he go over there to urinate. And he said while he urinating, he said he hear this a kind of noise that he can't really uh, identify. He said it's like a pulsating noise. Like it's something pulsating. He said, so he looking around, but he don't see nothing. So he said about 20 feet into those woods, he looks up and he see this blue light orb. And these are his words. He said this blue light orb was like 20 feet up in the tree. He said, so he watching this thing because he don't, he don't really know what it is. He said this orb shape started to open up he said and when it opened up he could see this dark figure just come out of it he said it hit the ground so hard he said whatever it was it had to be heavy so he zipping up his zipper he just and he backs up a little bit he said after about 10 seconds he see another blue orb about 30 feet from that he said and it did the exact same thing he said this orb started to open up he said and another dark figure came out hitting the ground boom he said so he backs up he backs up to the cornfield right there where the stalks at and he looking and he said, while he's standing there looking, he said, now he can see something coming in the view because he knows it's running towards him. He can hear these things, feet hit the ground, boom, boom, like it's vibrating the ground because he said he can feel it. That's how heavy these things were. He said, then these things came in the view. And as they was coming out the tree line, he knew that they was too upright walking dog men so he say he turns and he runs you know in the cornfield so he in the cornfield he said he trying to hide he was scared he never seen nothing like this before he said he was scared so he squatted down he said that's when he can hear the sound of heavy footsteps and he noticed that they coming inside of those cornfield rolls and he can hear it boom 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 he hit his thing walking so he's squatting down but he looking up so these steps they stop he said he gets up he eases himself up and he look over and these are his exact words and he shocked me when he said this he said during this time, the stalk in the head of these corns was eight to nine feet tall. He said when he looked over a couple of rows, he could see this massive creature. He said the tip of the stalks came to the chest of this thing. And I'm like, this thing had to be, what, 12, 14 feet? The tip of these stalks, he said, came to the chest of this creature. And he said he watched, he said the head on this thing, he couldn't even describe. He said, but the head was just massive. He said that he couldn't see the legs or none of this at this time. But he knew this thing had massive shoulders and it had arms. Didn't see no hands at this time. 
He said, so he squats back down and he eases his way out of the cornfield, headed back towards the cemetery, which is the old Indian burial mounds. So he eases his way back over there. He don't see none of his friends, none of them. It's like they just either disappeared or left him. This is what's going through his mind. So he gets over there and he turns around. He say, that's when he see both of these creatures again. He said, it's crazy because it's like they was running towards him, but it was like a bluff charge. And he said, these creatures was run. It's like you would run and then y'all would crisscross each other. He said, them creatures was doing that. Like it was a tactical formation. Like they knew what they was doing. He said they kept doing that over and over and over, but he never knew why. He said he was so scared that he didn't move. He just stood there. Why these creatures kept doing this? He said they did have the canine legs of a dove. He said, but these things was just massive. They was too big to be what some people would see to be a dog man. You talking about 12, 14 feet tall. These things was humongous, he said. So he watching these creatures just go in and out with each other. And he's standing there because he don't know what to do. He said, cause the sighting wasn't long. It wasn't long at all. He said at the most he give it two minutes. He said, but everything happened so fast. He said, but while he's standing there, he can hear his friends coming up through the cemetery, calling his name, Rick, Rick, where you at? You all right? So he say, yeah, I'm all right. Hurry up and get up here. So they start running up there. But when they get up there, those creatures left. And they each went over there near the tree that had the blue orb in it. And they just stood there, cause he can see all this. Poof, he said them creatures was gone. Those two dogmans just vanished. Like they went up back into these orbs. And when I'm talking to him, I'm asking him, what do you think? He said, I don't know. He said, I know one thing, I'm not crazy, I don't drink, I don't get high, but I know what I saw. So he said, they wind up, they leave. They go back home, they go back to Rick house. Rick sitting down, he said he out of it. And his friends kept asking him, what's wrong? What happened over there? And he said, why did y'all leave? I mean, why y'all leave me over there? He said, no, we was coming back. We went to just go get some, but we was coming back. We didn't see you, so that's why we left. He said, man, y'all ain't gonna believe it, what I saw. And they asked him, what did you see? He said, man, I seen these creatures, not one, but two of them, come out these blue looking orbs. And he said, they just started laughing, like it's a joke, and he said, he, he was so emotional that he started, to, I mean, it's like he said he started to cry. He said because his own friends didn't even believe a word that he was saying. You know, so he said he just kept it in. He kept it in. He never told any more until he contacted me. And I was so grateful just to get his encounter. And I still talked to him. And I told him, anytime you need somebody to talk to, my line always open, call me. Cause I'ma talk, no matter what time of day or night, just call me and I'ma talk to you. So that was that encounter. And like I said, that encounter happened in Canada. Cause now we're gonna jump into this next encounter. Now this next encounter, this guy, he called it the introduction of his encounter. And he said this encounter happened in 19, 
69. He said it was young when it happened to him, but he said he still remember like it was yesterday. So we're going to jump, you know, straight into this encounter right here. He said, growing up, he always felt that he had a connection with certain, certain animals. You know, it's like he said they would like speak to him. So I'm listening to him while he's telling me his encounter and I'm not taking it down. But like I said, I never doubt anyone of what they saw. But he said that he felt like he had a connection with these creatures. So he said one weekend, one of his favorite shows was going to come on TV. So he decided to um, sneak out his room, go in the front room and watch his show. He said in his front room, he said it's two windows. You know, you can look out. So he said he up, he's sitting down, he's looking at TV, looking at his show. He said, but he looks out the window and they call this over there. They call it like a um, courtyard. He said, because the houses was connected to each other. It was like a U shape, he said. So they called it out there with a the grass area at. They call it that, a courtyard. So he said he noticed five very large wolves out there. And he looking at these things because he, he never saw one before. He never saw a wolf before. He said it was five of them. And he said all of them had the exact same color, gray. He said he saw five gray wolves on all fours. He said, but they was just so big. Now, mind you, he got a dog. He said, but these things was like three to four, three to four times size of his dog. He said these things was huge, but they was on all fours. He said they had those yellow glowing eyes, all of them, the exact color. He said, so these things, these dugs, these huge, what he think is wolves, starts to look over in his window. And he know that they watching him. So he gets up. He walks over to the window and he looks again. Because he can't really believe what he's saying. He said they still looking in his direction. He said after about 35 seconds, 40 seconds, these creatures just turned around and they walked. Now, mind you, he said where he stayed at, right there where that courtyard was and that U-shaped houses that connect 40 feet from there was where the wood line started. at. And he said these five large wolves walked over and went up in the tree line. He said, but one of these things stopped. He said, one of these wolves stopped and it turned around and it looked at him again. He said, but this time it did something that he will never forget. He said, this gray wolf, what he thought, stood up on his hind legs and it stirred in his direction. He could still see this thing because it ain't that far from his house. He said it looked just like a wolf though. The ears, the snow. He said, but this thing had arms. And I asked him, I said, did you see the hands? He said, because of the distance and the lighting, he didn't. And I respected him for that because he said he didn't see it. So after that, it turned around and it dropped back down to all fours and it caught up with the other four and they just walked up in the tree line. And he's still watching these creatures as they going up in this tree line. He said he would never forget that sighting and it haunted him for years.
the next sighting that he would have would be in 1997. He's still living in Canada. So let's just get right into this up encounter that he had. He said one day he woke up, his stomach just started hurting real bad. So he started throwing up blood and stuff like that. He said he goes to the hospital. And he, while he at the hospital, they tell him that he got an ulcer. Said he stayed in the hospital for two weeks. Then after the two weeks, he leaves and he goes back home. You know, he go to stay with his friend. So his friend, he come pick them up, take them to his house. And he said that his friend lived in Oakville, west of Toronto and east of Hamilton. And he said it was the house that he lived in, it was in an upscale neighborhood. So it was like people that had money and stuff like that. So while he was staying there and he was trying to recuperate on his, um, you know, the Austin stuff, he asked them, he said, um, is there any bike trails around here where I can go and ride? Because he wanted to start exercising and getting himself together. He said, okay, we'll take you down there this weekend. So he said that Sunday, took his bike out, put it on top of the um car, and he took him to a place where he can ride his bike. So he said they driving. Now he said this place, it had a park at. I guess I'm a pr pronouncing it right, meaning it's like a, a, a park, you know what I mean, in that wood area. And he said that that park at wasn't that far from Lake Ontario. So he said they riding around and he said, he noticed that he had seen three guys. Three guys was, you know, riding past on a bike and he had got out the car and he said he started having a conversation with him, asking him about where's a good place where I can ride my bike at. So they had told him a place where he can ride his bike at. And, you know, he said he stayed there talking to them for like an hour. You know, his friend Park let him talk to him and everything. So he got back in the car. They goes back home. Now, mind you, this is on a Sunday. The next day, Monday, he gets up, eat breakfast, get himself together grab his bike and he rides he know where to go at now he know the directions he know how to get to this place so he say he get to this place you know he riding his bike he riding his bike and he riding he said he took the easy trail because he said they told him that they had easy trails down there that he could ride so he took some easy trail he said but while he was riding he said he came to this place that had like a waterfall to it and he noticed that behind this waterfall was three large cave openings. So he looking up there, but he don't see nothing. He says, so he rides some more. And then he goes home. He comes back the day after again, which is on a Tuesday. He said when he get there, he meets up with an old friend and he said they ride their bike and they parks it down there to where this waterfall at. He said, so when they get to this waterfall, you know, they climbs up. He said they sit like on the legs, like on the edge. Now, mind you, he said where they sitting at, they can look exactly down to where these cave openings at. He said, so they sitting up there he said that's when he heard the loudest howl that he ever heard in his life. He said it vibrated his body. That's what he said. These are his words, not mine. The way he give it to me, I'm going to give it to y'all. He said this howl vibrated his body. He said after a few seconds, he sees something come out on all fours of this cave. He said, then this thing looks over his shoulder. That's what he said this thing had, a shoulder. And it looked up at him. He said, and when it looked up at him, he said, this creature just turned his whole body and faced him. And started running up to the side like it was coming up in their direction. 
but it stopped. He said, and when this thing stopped, it just stirred at him on all four. He said, this thing was humongous. He said, this thing was large. He said, but he knew what Doug Man was, and he knew that this was one. Now, this really messed my head up. Even when he was giving me his encounter, he said he gets up, and he walks in the direction of this thing. And stop about 15 feet from it. And I asked him, I say, well, why would you do that? He said, I always felt a connection with animals. He said, so we stopped at about 15 feet. He said that when he stopped, this creature looked straight in his eyes. Now, these are his words, and these words right here just got to me because I have dealt with our witnesses that this happened to. He said this creature spoke to him. He said he don't know how, he don't know why, but this creature spoke to him. And it specifically told him, and these his words. He said this creature said, don't chase me, because I will fight. And he's looking at this thing. And he asked his friend, he said, did you hear that? His friend said, hear what? This thing talk. He said, man, that thing ain't talk. He said, and that thing spoke again and told him the exact same words. If you chase me, I will fight. He said, then this thing just turned around, went back down, and went back up in that cave. He said at, a, at about 20 minutes past, he walked down there, and he looked in that cave, but he didn't see nothing. So they grabs their bike, and they leave. The next day, he comes back again. And when he come back this time, not that far from this waterfall is a shoreline where the lake is at. He said he see this animal type creature running bipedal on his hind legs. And he said to him, it looked just like a werewolf. Now, mind you, he say this, he not too far from it. He not too far from this shoreline. He said, and when this thing stopped, he said it took like 20 paces running. And it, then it stopped real quick and did like a 360. And it turned and faced him. He said, but while this creature was running, he could see arms and that this thing had hands. He said, because he had his hands cut. He said, this thing did a 360 and it looked over in his direction. And when he said he looked this thing up and down, he noticed that this creature had by, no, he had humanoid legs. They was just straight. Not the bent back legs like a dog, man. He said it had humanoid legs. He said, but it was something about the face that really threw him off. He said that this thing even though it looked like a werewolf, he said to him, it had like cat-like features. And I kept asking him over and over, what do you mean cat-like features? And he said, I, it's hard for me to describe, but to me, it had cat-like features. And you know, he's looking at this thing and this thing looking over at him. He said, then this creature turned and it walks up in the tree line. But it stayed right at the front of the tree line. He said, and it held its head down and kept pacing like it was looking for something. So he's still watching this creature. But this thing ain't paying him no attention no more. He said, it's looking around with its head down like it lost something. He said, these things got to be intelligent.
He said, that's when he see this creature bend over and pick up something to him that looked it like a bag. He said he picked that bag up and sniffed it and threw it back on the ground. He said it turned and looked at him one more time and then it walked back up in the tree line. And I kept asking him over and over because it fascinated me. I never heard nothing like that. I said, so you saying this thing, hey, was it a cat? He said, no, it's not. it wasn't no cat or nothing like that. It just had facial features like a cat. He said, but it was a werewolf. So I'm like, I'm listening to him, you know what I mean? And I said, okay, you know what you saw. You was there. You know what you saw. And you giving it to me the way you saw it. And, you know, I said, I respect that. And, you know, and I'm grateful. So he leaves. He said he comes back again the next day. And I was saying in my mind, I'm like, man, you must want these creatures to jump on you or something. I'm saying that in my mind. I don't say nothing to him while he giving me his encounter. He said when he get there the next day, he goes to the same spot like he always went to near the waterfall. And he said about 30 feet, it's a bush. And he said he could see something just keep popping up, a dark, you know, a dark figure. So he said this thing here just kept popping up and going back down, popping up and going back down. So I asked him, I say, was it the same creature that you seen? Because mind you, he's seen two different ones. These is his words. The first ones he seen had the canine legs on all fours that came out that cave. Then the other one he seen running by the shoreline, it had hominid legs. So that's why he called that thing a werewolf. So this thing kept popping up behind this bush. It would come up and go back down. He said, but this creature never moved from behind that bush. He said, before he got ready to leave, that's when this thing growled at him. And he got on his bike and he rode off. He went back home. And when he got back home, you know, he was talking to his friend and whatever, letting him know about <laughs> basically what he saw because he wound up confiding in somebody. And I asked him, I said, I went back to that thing when he said that this thing had cat-like features. I'm like, was it a cat, something on? He said, no, it looked like a werewolf, but I can't explain it, but it had cat-like features. So I left it as that, man. Like I said, I was just grateful to get his encounter. That happened in Canada too. So we're gonna just jump right into this next encounter. Now this encounter right here, it happened in Alabama, 2014. Now, this eyewitness right here, we're going to call her B. So B said she was, you know, she said she was living in the city. And her parents lived about 45 minutes away from her. And, you know, she used to always go over there, you know, and stay during the weekend. So she said she went over there one weekend. You know, she drove over there. And she said when she got there, she said it was night when she got there, so let me just clarify that. She said it was night. So we said when she got there, she said she had parked, you know, on the side, you know, near parents' house, and she parked near this oak tree. But it's still facing the wood line, basically. And she said she just, you know, she sat in her car, because she didn't go in the house yet. She sat in her car with her headlights on. So she said she sat there, she said, that's when she seen this dark figure down near the um, path going towards up in the tree line. So she looked at this thing. Now, mind you, she said she already, you know, basically knew what a dove man was. So the first thing popping in her head was that this is a dog man. So she said this thing turned this head and she said it looked right into her eyes right into the car and she said it, it felt like this thing was just looking like it was just looking inside her soul she said she sat there b 
because she was scared. She didn't go no more. So she turned the boom. She turned the lights up. The high beams up on this thing. Now she can see this thing clearly. So she said this thing was standing right there in the pathway when she turned the um lights up on it. She said the color on these things eyes was blue. You know what I mean? I was like, what aqua blue, like ocean blue. She said they was just blue. And she had sent me a picture. I think it was on a wolf one time, and she had showed me the um the eye, eye color on this thing, and they was blue from what I seen. So she said she's sitting there because she already know what this thing is. So she said after a few, she said this creature just walked down this little path. It walked down this path. And she said she's still watching this thing. And she said while she watching it, she see two more of these things. But she said they gray. And they walking upright. But she only see the back of them. And she said they was in front of the one that went in behind them. So she see two of them. She said she didn't see, you know, no snout or nothing like that on these. But she see the back of them. She know that they was an all gray color. Now she said she did see that this thing, it had a snout. It had arms. It had heads. And it had canine legs. She said, so she watching them things go down the path. She said, she calls, you know, she said in the car, she calls and I'll tell somebody come out, call her nephew to come out and get her because she's scared to go in the house. That's what he did, come out, he get her and she goes into the house. And three years later, her nephew would have a sighting at the same spot. Said he got off of work one night, like 12 o'clock. And he parked in the same place that, um, you know, his aunt B had parked. So he said he's sitting in the car and he texting on the phone at this time. But, he, you know, he still got the car running. He said, so while he texting on the phone, he sees something in the same path up in the tree line, up in the woods. He sees something standing there. And it's a dog man because he always remember what his aunt said that she had seen. So he said it had the pointed ears, long arms, it had hands, and it had the bent back legs with the hocks. So he's sitting in the car. He said he was scared. He said, because this thing is looking straight at him too. So he was scared. So he said that he called and he did the same thing that his aunt did. Called in the house. She answered the phone. And he said, can you come out here and get me? It's one of them dove things out here. And he was scared to go in the yard. But mind you, she didn't go outside. A friend went outside to go get him and bring him in the house. And like I said, that was um encounter, and that was um in Alabama. And I was just happy enough to get that encounter. And hope everybody enjoyed. And that's it. Marvin, I know your phone's been giving you trouble, and we probably better jump off here before it cuts out on you and I lose you. I just want to thank you so much again for coming on and doing this. I really appreciate it. And from talking with you just not that long ago, I'm looking forward to having you back on soon. So thanks again so much. Oh, man, anytime, Vic. Like I said, though, um, if it wasn't for my phone, I did have other encounters, you know what I mean? I told the listeners and the subscribers, man, that um, you know, I was going to push for the... um. 90 minutes, two hours, but um, it's always the next time. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It can't happen soon enough. But having said that, thanks again so much. Have a great night. If you've had a dog man encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you.